YouTube, it's Grego here in his normal understated self. This is a different way of doing things for me. I'm um, going to, we've got time lapse video um, of Andrew doing a repair on a bay window combi sliding door. And what I'm going to do is attempt to do a voiceover explaining uh, the process because on time lapse you see him flying through all the work. You can see him do all the different stages, but I thought we'd do a, a voiceover over the top and see how that goes. So this is the first time for doing this style of video, so let me know if you like it. Give me a thumbs up. Isn't that what they say? Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, just joking. You don't have to, but yeah, that would be nice. Um, so the first video where we started off, Andrew is a bit hesitant about even doing the video. And um, I said, no, nah, it'll be good. It'll be good for people to see where you start with. So um, I've got, we're starting with uh, the door's been laid on a table. It has been sandblasted, uh, so you could see where all the holes were along the bottom of the door. You could see how high up the holes come on the sides. And the thing is, you've just got to get it back to bear. It's going to be, if you haven't sandblasted your panels, so you're not sure where you should cut the rust out to, like find a pardon me find a line where it's got to be done uh the best thing was is to strip that paint off. oh pardon me i just had a bit too much um tomato soup action for dinner um yeah so you've got to find the the areas that need cutting out so this was rusted all the way along the bottom so it wasn't just some doors we can put in a couple of patches and that's all it needs but this one was had been patched previously in the past and it was a fail obviously because it didn't last and you'll see the panel later online on the ground how rusty it was behind now you use putting patches on or replacing panels or whatever you're doing and not treating the back areas the parts that you don't see so andrew I uh, might kick off the video now. So Andrew has, he's starting off by marking the line to the minimum that uh, will cover the whole rusted area. You can see on the left side there of the panel that it's, um, the rust comes up the side a bit. So he might as well do one piece right across. Um, what he was doing just before was he had a prof. He was just basically doing a bit of a profile of the curve on the bottom, um, and you he just used a bit of cardboard and uh, trace it on the side of along the curve so you can see the line. So here you can see he's cutting where he needs to cut, and he is trimming across the sides and the bottom. You saw how rusty that was on the inside. Uh, you can see the panel on the floor there. It had like six different patches put into it in the past, but you can see how dry and rusty it is on the inside of that panel there. So Andrew's just cleaning that up with a wire wheel. Got to get it to where you need it. Um, he's checking that for straightness. So now he's um, going to trim a bit of uh, cold rolled steel. Uh, that's what we use for making panels like this repairs um, much easier to work with than anything else uh, and the he's going to we picked up these shears recently you see how quickly and easily leaves a little pigtail of sheet metal there on the ground but it is a very accurate cut if as long as you're accurate with the the you know the, using the tool itself you can follow a straight line and it's all good, quite a bit quicker than the grinder, quieter, um, and no sparks, etc. So it's been, a, for under $100, it's been a worthwhile tool having. So, uh, yeah, so that's a great way of trimming sheet metal. If you don't have a, what do you call it? A, uh, not a bloody rotisserie. 
uh, if you don't have a guillotine. Right, so now you can see Andrew needs to get the sheet metal, the piece of sheet metal, uh, a slight curve put in the bottom of it, as you can see on the bottom of the door. So, in our newly acquired English wheel, Andrew's feeding it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Check, try again, check the profile, back again. That's why it's handy having it pretty close to where you're working. Um, and another thing you might have noticed, he used the uh, wax and grease remover and a clean rag to get that sheet metal nice and clean because you, one bit of dust on the English wheel can can wreck it. So um, not wreck the whole machine, but I mean, it's you need to have the sheet metal super clean. Uh, yeah, so you can see him doing his little English wheel dance, just getting that curve in. And like he, uh, Andrew went and did a sheet metal shaping course and it was the best thing ever. We had super confidence straight up when once we bought the machine knew what he had to do with it and uh, that's been really good that was a worthwhile thing to do so of course once you do a course like that you work out what gear you need and that's hence the metal man tools gear in the background oh we just paused here now so I'm going to go into the next video right so Andrew has put a curve into the panel but I think he's obviously not 100% happy so he is uh, you change the bottom die you can see all the dies stacked up on the side of the English wheel and it just it uh, alters how much it bends the sheet metal around when you feed it through so the top roller is dead flat and the the bottom one is uh, you got various curves you can have near flat to quite pronounced so that's what Andrew's doing, checking, double checking. This is why these things take time, but well worth it. Um, I'll just mention now that if you check out the bottom of the door, the back support, you'll notice that, um, yeah, you can't see it completely from the angle that the GoPro is set up on, but it has, uh, it was quite a bit rusty too. So I know Andrew cleaned it up with the wire brush, but I feel that um, I, I came in and said, look, I think we better remove that. It's going to be better. So we, uh, I got in the cut it out and make another piece and weld it in. And there goes the shears. You can see how well that worked. Uh, yeah, so the next thing was um, just crimping that back edge over. We have a sheet metal folder you can see in the background, but it's only good for... 750 mil something like that maybe 600 i don't know but for this door it's like 1100 wide or whatever it is it is too wide for the folder so andrew is trying to create a nice square edge on there so he had to manually uh hit it over the anvil and uh yeah just panel beat that into into the correct shape or close uh, I guess that's another thing down the track when we first got that little bench mounted folder it was really cool because we could do stuff but it's just when you get to the width of these panels then it's like okay we could probably upgrade that to something a little bit wider and uh, yeah so that's there he goes again wheelie 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 so uh, the next step will be to, once he's happy with that, is I think, hang on, I'm going to edit this anyway. Uh, I think we have the, the bottom piece, we're going to cut that off and remove it and make up a new piece for it. So I think he get, uses the shears again and we will see how this goes. See? This is the first time it's going to be interesting trying to edit this um, so that it all works out. So you'll see Andrew there spraying a bit of rust treater, but we just noticed it was just hard to see from the angle that it's on, but there was a few too many holes on the inner support there. Oh, I'm going to the next video now. Um, so I... 
what what there is on the back there yeah we must have discussed it already and i said remove that um and he was going to cut it just in sections and leave the little parts below the drain holes i said look there's with a bit of sheet metal there you're still going to have the drain hole there it'll only be just touching along the bottom there so water will still be able to escape out there even if you weld on a piece right across so there he is with his sheet again dogs in and out of course oh good on you andrew adjusted the camera angle you're the man so yeah he's just marking out um, a thin strip which has always been a bit of a pain um, when you're uh, what's he going to use? Let's see if he's... No, he's going back for the shears again. So he must be pretty confident that it's... He's got it sus, so it's nice and straight. Might need a little bit of tweaking here and there with the grinder, but um, overall it should be pretty good. So now I notice the the video. He, oh, he's topping up his water bottle. He's all good. So yeah, so he's welding in that strip at the bottom because... Without doing that, you'd have a nice skin on the outside that you see. I guess that's all that most people see. But why not fix the inside as well? Because there would have been a, quite a few holes to fill. Um, and you don't really want sort of bog in the bottom of the door. Um, I know it's only the inside and you'd probably use a bit of fiberglass filler or something. But I said for the time it would take, which wasn't very long at all, just whip up another piece and um, yeah get that tacked into place so I think that's what we'll see next here he is you'd be surprised how many individual tools you need so we call that belty so the little belt sander is super handy the rowlock that we only use the two inch really two inch rowlocks um, which is the like the mini sanding disc there his bow's busy, he's in and out, in and out. Yeah, so uh, I think the next stage is uh, tacking that piece in. So what I'm going to do is fast forward that a bit and let's see how we go. I'm going to see if... Yeah, there he goes. So he's... Um, tackled that by just getting it lined up so it's everything's the correct length and width and then just put a few tacks in it didn't need to be seam welded right across so it's there for strength and the it's sort of going to be the correct shape on the back of the door even though most people won't see it but we like to at least attempt to uh, make things properly repair things properly so we um so now it's just a matter of cleaning up the welds and oh, we're ready for the next video now. Uh, you can see there Andrew has sprayed the copper, uh, that's a copper weld through primer. Uh, I think that's a Phoenixa one. They're all not much difference between them. They're pretty expensive, but they're a good product. So Andrew's just sanded the epoxy primer off the edge that he's going to butt weld that sheet to. So now is the time that he's got a, he's, he's got the curve in there already. He, never mind the bottom edge yet that gets folded around the back. But you've got to get a tack in. You've got to make sure that it's all level down the sides. And you've got to have a slight gap for you to weld to. Um, and that sometimes means a bit of trimming as it goes. Uh, you can see there with the, the cordless grinder has been handy. We picked that up recently and... Um, not a lot of grunt but it's just handy for little bits of trimming without having another cord in the road so um, yeah so just getting a, a nice gap between the sheet metal is crucial you see he's got a strong magnet there to pull it up into line so and even his he's got a very specific screwdriver that he uses it's a tiny one and he um, grinds it down so it's almost a, a square point on the bottom so it's really thin you can get in and, and lift the sheet metal so that it's level so you can see him there with his uh, welding and cooling every weld that he does he cools it straight away 
and this is crucial for this sort of this sort of job where um, you've got a big flat panel and they are easy to warp so we're glad that um, we're glad that we you know can do this sort of work properly and I guess it's just come from years of experience and you know uh, I guess some people would just search for another door and whatever but I don't believe it's necessary to replace the whole skin so it's always a good thing to um, learn how to do a repair like this without going cray cray so um, because heat is the enemy and this sort of thing now we use, also use TIG welding uh, but a TIG you should only use the TIG where you have access to behind it for um, planishing afterwards. So in the case of this door, we've migged the whole thing, mikul, 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 and uh, because uh, a fair chunk of it, you, you, well, actually most of it, it's just low enough that it's uh, hidden by a support and the uh, support behind it means you can't get a dolly in there or anything like that to um, you know dress it with a hammer on the outside and and uh, have a dolly on the inside so it was decided to do it this way uh, and you'll see if I make future you know other videos in the future of this sort of thing uh, you'll see that we're, we're you know where is an appropriate place to use the TIG welder like as far as grinding the welds down it's just so nice to um, uh, yeah it's just so nice to dress the welds just get it nice and smooth so easily compared to compared to MIG which are a lot harder uh, we use 0.6 wire because we don't do any real heavy welding we have you know, Andrew knocked up his welding trolley there in the background the other day. That's you know a few mils thick that RHS, and you can crank the crank the heat up a bit even with the um, the thin wire, and it still welds it fine. If we were doing you know building chassis or roll bars or something like that, then we obviously go for a bigger bigger gauge uh, welding wire. But for sheet metal, it's 0.6 is nice. So. As long as you got everything, you're not stabbing your welds too much. Where you can bend the wire a bit, and then you have to pull it through the machine when it, when the wheel won't. Yeah. Anyway, anyone who's used a MIG wire knows what that's like. When you've got to uh, trim the wire and pull it through and feed it through the hose and then out the torch and then screw the end back on. And yeah. Anyway, so. I know it's more likely to happen with 0.6, but it doesn't happen very often because you just got to be careful. Um, it's a good boy, Bo. So yeah, Andrew's just uh, tacking and blowing, tacking and blowing. Uh, that that is the key, and it, it, it takes time. He is going in a row. Um, sometimes you can go back and forth, but he's doing uh, leaving you know, a bit of a gap each time and then he goes back and then starts filling the gaps. And yeah, it's just, uh, you can see he's welding down the sides there, making sure it's trimmed off. So he's left the tiniest amount on the side to actually weld to. Um, and so, he's a, yeah, a little bit of a weld overlap on the edge and you can just smooth that up and it's all solid and all good. So so yeah that's the stage we're up to welding 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 and then um cooling in yeah virtually each one so you just got to be able to use the two hands andrew is left-handed so his welds are going to be more accurate if you use his left hand and the right hand is just for uh blowing cooling it instantly and i gotta say on the this panel it was just no warpage at all he did a great job it took you know takes a little bit of time welding right across that much sheet metal but uh it come up really good i was super happy 
Uh, and you also have to cool when you're at the grinding stage as well. So, so I'm going to see, I'm going to just fast forward this up to the next video. Yeah, okay, well, it was a bit of a, um, he says, oh, I don't want a video, and I'm like, okay, I'll just, I'll just run it while I'm filling up. So there's me spreading some mud on um, thingos on Phoenix's panels. So uh, yeah, it's I put a first layer on and then buzzed over that, and now I'm just doing a fill in a few low points here and there, just removing the fuel cap there. This is um, totally unrelated to the last video, but um, Andrew must have saw the light and decided to uh, pinch the camera back and, uh, yeah, take it back to where, where he was, which I'm glad he did because you get to see the whole process. So that's the um, the skim coating of the filler of Phoenix that you see in there, and that's um, 3M Platinum over Epoxy. So, oh, there we go, speeding in. So now he is, can you see that left, like one-handed grinding, that's uh, skill needed. Um, and there's, so the bulk of the welds were removed with a, probably a, a 60 grit uh, flap wheel on the grinder. And now Andrew's finishing off, because you can get in, right into uh, the V of the world with that uh, Rolock. So, and there Andrew is checking heights and straightness. So looking for any dips and there's me taking photos for Facebook. Uh, yeah, so there's, um, so we worked out that We've got to flip the door over. I think you can see us doing this in a sec. Andrew's shoulder is a bit ordinary, so uh, I'm helping him out. I started tapping away at the back, but yeah, so now we, we dress that over because it is fully supported now, the panel. Um, it's coming up really good. So this... Uh, sheet metal the coal rolled i think it's uh, one mil or something like that it's um it's so nice to work with compared to what we used to use so you can see andrew hammer and dolly in that so that he's checking it for straightness and then looking at um you know is there any bows in it and does it line up straight down the sides as well look for low points and we worked it out that there was a little bit bowed um, in the center section so the big long ruler doesn't lie so it tells you what's really straight so in the end with a bit of crimping with the duck bills we uh, had it looking super nice so can't complain about that that's a bloody good job so that'll virtually uh, need no filler well It'll get a skim anyway on the whole door because, um, you know, 50-year-old panels are never perfect. That one's pretty good. But, um, yeah, so this is um, a door from Violet. You can see Violet there in the background on the right. And it has needed a lot of repairs, but we're getting closer to getting it done. So Andrew thought he'd tackle the doors before wheeling it in and doing the last of the body. So... Uh, uh, so Andrew had there, he's got to uh, cut out a curved piece and was trying to work out the measurements. And uh, yeah, we also have a dressmaker, um, a dressmaker's uh, tape measure. So it's like a flexible tape measure. You see the rain there in the background? I was supposed to be painting that the beetle on the right there, um, but with the crazy humidity we've had in the rain I wasn't going to be painting it that's why I was switched jobs up and and started filling um, Phoenix so uh, the um, yeah so this piece is a little bit tricky because it's uh, like a curve and then it yeah has an edge on it where the window sits in you can sort of see it there from that angle so a little bit of bit of work needed to um, 
to match that piece and not sure ah oh, he i remember him saying that um you know he's going for the a very aggressive uh die on the english wheel not sure how that goes a little bit of curve so he's there he goes with the sandbag he got really shitty <laughs> because the uh sandbag has got holes in it and it's leaking sand so you you pound away on the metal to get that curve into it and next minute you just plumes of sand so we, we we will replace that i don't think that's something that you can repair so we will do that and i'm just looking at the rain in the background going wow that was uh pretty cool we don't get a massive amount of rain here and but this is the year for it obviously so uh, yeah so there's andrew cleaning up the edges of the um the you know the existing metal which is the inside of the roller door sliding door um and that area uh just yeah basically where he's got to put the piece in behind there he's put rust treater on that's what we do it every time so andrew there is having a go at the uh air planisher hasn't had much of a go you put an aggressive die on the bottom of that and give it a go so it's like a miniature air hammer that uh, powers away see me blocking my ears because it's a it's definitely a loud one um yeah but uh it actually put quite the curve into the sheet metal so next video um is andrew he's made his piece i think he's pretty happy with that isn't that what they say he's made his peace with the world um yeah so i think he's um just got to weld that in place now so there was so there was an inner piece on the bottom a small bit and there was the full outer sheet that you saw welded before there's this piece and then there's another piece which is basically where the window would sit on the outside so that's that's a bit of the process there you can see him tacking away because that is a curved piece of sheet metal he doesn't need to cool that between the welds it's pretty good to um pretty good to just weld that along there um sometimes you see little cracks pardon me um and you see uh little holes because it's been sandblasted you know that there's it's not going any further so it's okay to plug those holes with weld and then uh, sand it all smooth because we will be um, getting rust treater in behind those areas later anyway so oh we're on to the last video i think so that shows the back of the repair that he's just done um and now his um making i think a little owl piece because a lot of the areas where the windows sit are like double skinned so i've got a feeling yeah i'd say he's making an owl piece with that so he'll take that to the folder possibly and uh yeah he's marked it where he's got to fold it put it in the folder get that angle look at that it's just about perfect off the bat so yeah that's um he's just marking he might trim a little bit more off that material just so that it sits not over the top but just sits inside it so so that's cool so i'm really glad this uh oh yeah because of the rain it was the, even the copper spray was quite slow and dry and i said just get the bloody get the heat gun out and just uh bang it on and um and uh it should dry that out in no time a couple of minutes so that's obviously what he did uh yeah so clean up the edge so you can get a good weld apparently i think the rep told us you can't actually weld through this green primer but um it's always nicer if it's clean metal on clean metal so yeah this has sort of been a, a good project to test out some of the new equipment 
that we got. Uh, you can get away with, well, we have for the last few years, getting away without the English wheel and bead roller, and we're doing things the hard way. So um, shrinker and stretcher are definitely, we had them just hand operated before, and um, now we've got the foot pedal that makes it easier for to hold the sheet metal two hands and then just um, use your foot to shrink or stretch. Uh, yeah, so you you know slowly building up the tools needed to do a better job quicker. So this looks like the end of the video. Um, thanks for putting up with my non bloody game show host voice, and I guess this is a, a um it's the end of the day, and it's more you know you're hearing more of a chilled Grego. The man with the golden microphone. No, so, um, bloody, uh, I think Andrew has, yeah, just making a little piece for that corner. So that would make one, two, three, four, five, five separate pieces to repair that door, but it's a good job. So that's all that matters. Um, just making a little cardboard template, which is always handy. So scissors and cardboard and a permanent marker. Not thick cardboard, but you know, the card as they call it. Um, and basically, uh, make the shape, and then, yeah, what's he using? Let's just use the grinder there, it's only a small piece. Trim it up, trim it up until it sits, and then, um, yeah, and there, there we go. Clean it up with a belty and mig it in place. So, there you go, that is the repair of a sliding door I hope you all enjoyed that and even more so I hope that this is still recording um, oh god I think so I think it's still recording yes it is 32 minutes all right I'm gonna be out for now I'm, I'm leaving all right have a good night bye